Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is How to Learn to Code in Unity and welcome to episode 10. So this episode we are going to discuss uh, creating simple triggers, we're going to discuss iEnumerator and we're also going to discuss why we use the word public in scripting. So creating a trigger is pretty simple. The idea of a trigger is a script which says as soon as the player, for example, enters a particular object, we can do something. So I'm going to create a new scene and I'm going to create a quick game object, which is going to be the floor. And we can do that real simple. Next, I'm going to bring in a first person controller. So we go to import package and then we go to um, characters right there. So I'm going to use this as a way of explaining exactly how a trigger works within a game and the impact it can have. But at the same time, I'm also going to explain what an I enumerator is exactly and why you would need to use it. Because there are many ways, in JavaScript at least, that you could do this. But C Sharp is slightly different. And as we are now going to focus on C Sharp, I feel the need to explain why this is necessary. So once I have my standard assets in and I have my character on this object here. So now he's there. I'm going to have a cube which is going to represent the trigger. So game object, 3D object, cube. Let's have it there. That's perfectly fine. And what I'll do is I'll add some UI. So I'll go into UI and I'll add some text which will appear in the middle of the screen. And let's have it quite large. Let's have it as 60. Obviously we'll need to um, increase the size of this. And we'll place it dead center and we'll get rid of any text currently set. So at present, the scene is just set as, as you, as you would expect. So let's get to work on this trigger. Let's create a script, which allows us to set the trigger off. So create C sharp script. Let's have this as trigger script. And let's open it up in visual studio or mono develop, whichever one you have. So. I'll also explain why we use public in C Sharp scripting as well. So let's get rid of void update and void start. We don't need them. So when declaring variables, we always put public game object and let's call this text box. The reason we put public is so as when we bring this into Unity here, it gives us the opportunity to apply a variable visually i.e. over here in the inspector panel. You could declare your variables like so, without the word public. But I always feel having the word public gives us much more control over what we're doing in Unity. So because we've used uh, some, or well, we are going to use UI, we'll just need to add in up here using Unity Engine.UI. So the reason we have to add that in is so the script realizes that there is going to be some UI elements within this script. So it needs to import everything it needs to recognize that. So going down here, we're going to do void on trigger enter. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. So this is going to be the trigger. And within here, all we'll need to do is let's have the text box appear as let's say yes after so many seconds so what we're going to need to do is actually have a coroutine now a coroutine is something that we can refer to as an i enumerator so if we put start co routine and in brackets we can name this anything we want let's just have this as starter display then open close bracket close bracket, semicolon, and then close curly bracket. So at this present moment, especially if you're using uh, mono develop, you'll notice starter display is highlighted red. So let's start with I enumerator. Now the reason we use I enumerator instead of void is because we want to use uh, wait for seconds. And wait for seconds is a way of delaying something that happens. So I enumerator, starter, display, open close bracket, open curly bracket, 
Let's go down a few lines and close curly bracket and you'll see start display turns black. So now we'll do yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets let's have 4.5 seconds. So 4.5 f because it's a float close bracket and then after this particular length of time we'll make the text box say whatever. So it's called text box dot get component in spiky brackets the word text open close bracket dot text equals double quote in fact no we'll actually just put uh, whatever we want to type so we'll put yes and that's all there is to it for that so the reason we use an enumerator is because of this particular line here if we were to use say void starter display it wouldn't work it just throw up an error it just kind of have a bit of a fit and say nope i can't do this so that's the reason for i enumerator so we can save that script head back to unity and it's saying it's expecting something let's have a look okay so yeah we just didn't put the semicolon at the end there save and now what we'll do is to enable that cube that we had there as the trigger we have to actually put the script onto it and then as i say with the public that's why this appears so just to show you how this works if we take away the word public and save the script you can see that the script will still work we don't get any errors as such we get warnings saying it's never um, assigned or you know but it doesn't appear here so we can't drag and drop the actual variable so hence the word public. If you're declaring your variable here, then it wouldn't matter too much. For example, if we had an integer that said int hello integer, and we put equals five, semicolon, and save, it wouldn't appear here, but the variable still would be set. So we can get rid of that and save. And we just need to drag and drop our text onto our game object there, onto the variable. So now, when we walk into this, provided we have is tigger ticked, we should be able to set off the text on screen. So let's walk into it. And after 4.5 seconds, we have the word yes appear on screen. So that's the proof that the I enumerator works and has the wait for seconds working. If we were to put the word void, we just wouldn't be able to play. It would not allow it one bit. So the final thing I'm going to explain is this public again. It's not necessarily just um, on variables that we would use it. Let's get rid of this trigger cube. And let's get rid of... Um, what should we do? Let's get rid of the void on trigger enter. We don't need that right now. And what we'll do is we'll do public void and we'll call it button press open close bracket open curly bracket down a few lines close curly bracket and here we'll have that start co routine and starter display again open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so the reason we have public here is because we want to assign it to a button which is going to be on screen. So if we go to game object, UI and button right there. I'm going to keep it as the word button, but I'm also going to apply a trigger script to a game object. So the trigger script, although it's not really trigger anymore, we need to assign the text. Oops, not that one. We need to assign the text on the canvas again. So there and on the button itself if we click on plus bring that game object over click on no function trigger script and we can see button press if we did not have the word public there we would not be able to see in this list button press so when you're using ui buttons in unity when you want to press them you have to use that word public before void otherwise it's just not going to work so the same principle happens again 
if we press this button here, we wait 4.5 seconds, and then hopefully on screen we get the word yes. So we've got the I enumerator working yet again to delay whatever we want to do. So ultimately, the words public and I enumerator are absolutely crucial when it comes to C sharp scripting. There's a lot more to it, by all means, and it, it's something that you'll learn as you go deeper and deeper into any kind of development. It's not too difficult to get to grips with, but it's a lot of fun to work out what's going on and the different effects that you can have when you put things together. So we'll leave that episode there now, and if you need any more assistance, if you want to know something about anything we've covered up until now in this series, um, just let me know. You know, just leave a comment uh, below, and I'm, I always do try and get back to people. Learning C-sharp can be quite strenuous and quite difficult depending on what you're trying to do. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.